everybody. Welcome to Just Up Right. Thank you so much for watching and taking time to uh, click this video. My name is Doc Jing Ruder. I'm a doctor of physical therapy. I'm also a certified dementia practitioner. I'm practicing here in the U.S. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the another type of uh, visa needed by foreign trained or foreign educated physical therapists to work here in the US. If you haven't checked out my video about working visa, you can click on the top portion and uh, it will take you to the working visa or H1B. And I explain in simple terms what H1B is. I'm going to discuss uh, today the EB2 or uh, employer-based type two and EB3, employer-based uh, type three immigrant visa. But first, uh, disclaimer, I am not a lawyer. I'm not an immigration lawyer. So this presentation is for uh, information only. This is not a legal advice. And I, I, you don't rely on what I say purely in this video on uh, making your decision uh, regarding your immigration uh, application. You should always consult with immigration lawyer, have a close communication coordination with your agency or um, employer, okay? Regarding any questions that you may have about your petition, about your visa, okay? Um, the information that I'm going to share with you guys are readily available uh, on the internet right now. I'm, just, I'm going to take you to a specific websites where I find the information. Uh, and please always go to the uh, website of interest, for example, for uh, visa information, the USCIS.gov is the official website of the United States Immigration. Uh, that is a very reliable website and always check for updates and changes, okay? Because immigration is always changing, it's fluid, okay? So um, by the time that you watch this video, there might be uh, other updates or information necessary for you to know uh, that will be affecting your application to be able to be practiced here in the US, okay? So the first website that we're going to discuss, I will take you guys here to the fsppt.org, okay? So this is the immigration information for foreign educated physical therapists. So if you go through here, it will tell you that you need a visa to work here in the US, okay? So um, here, uh, not all foreign nationals in the country even legally are permitted to work. Visas that allow a foreign national to live in the United States do not necessarily allow a foreign national to work in the United States. When a foreign national seeks admission to the United States specifically to work as physical therapist, the USCIS requires the individual to have healthcare worker certification prior to obtaining a visa, which allows an individual to work, okay? So the HCWC, if you haven't watched, I discuss what is HCWC in my other video. It's not a visa. It's a certification practically saying that you passed the TOEFL, the test of English as foreign language, and other requirements, okay, before they issue you the certification. Uh, it's just reassuring that you can communicate effectively in English, whether reading, writing, you know, listening, okay, uh, the overall communication. So it is very important because, you know, we're dealing with lives of patients. And so if there is a if you cannot communicate in English, your patients cannot understand you or you cannot understand the patient, mistakes can happen, injury can happen or death can happen. So that's why they're requiring this uh, certification before you are approved of a visa. But remember, it's not a visa on its own. It doesn't mean that you have a healthcare work 
worker certification that the visa will automatically follow, okay? So there are other requirements. And again, coordinate with your agency and uh, uh, employer on what other requirements needed for you to be able to be employed here in the US, okay? So there are here, they discuss the four types of visa uh, in the Philippines where I came from and I took, you know, my education. Um, the most common type of visa uh, being used to petition the Filipino workers, uh, physical therapists, H-1B, EB-2, or EB-3, okay? So the H-1B, again, I discussed this already in my other video, so watch that video. So we're gonna focus on EB-2 or and EB-3. So EB-2 and EB-3 are immigrant visas, okay? Permanent worker immigrant visa. So EB-2 is allowing an individual holding an advance. So that's a key word advanced degree to enter the United States for employment. The visa holder will, will be eligible to apply for a permanent resident green card status. The EB-3 is a permanent worker immigrant visa allowing, so there are three categories here, skilled worker, professional, and other, and other, to enter the US for employment. The visa holder will be eligible to apply for permanent resident or green card status. The TN non immigrant classification, this is for qualified Canadian or Mexican citizen to temporarily enter the US to engage in professional level uh, business activities, okay? So this came from FSBPT. Now, if we're going to dig a little bit deeper about what EB2 is, so I went to, you know, uh, employer-based, employment-based immigration, second preference, EB2. This is, as you can see, this is USCIS.gov. So this is the official website of the Citizenship and Immigration Services. So the EB2, so you have, they have subcategories about uh, advanced degree, exceptional ability, or national interest waiver. So under, okay, let me make this a little bit bigger. So uh, under advanced degree, you have to have the following, okay? Uh, the description of advanced degree is that the job you apply for Four must require an advanced degree, and you must possess a degree of its foreign equivalent or its foreign equivalent, a baccalaureate or foreign equivalent degree, plus five years post baccalaureate um, progressive work experience in the field. You must meet the other requirements specified on the labor certification as applicable. Exceptional ability is you must be able to show exceptional ability in the sciences, arts, or business. Exceptional ability means degree of expertise significantly above the, that ordinarily encountered in science, arts, or businesses. You must meet any requirements specified in the labor certification as applicable. Okay, so as we go back to the advanced degree, there is evidence here that you should uh, submit uh, documentation such as official academic record showing that you have US advanced degree or foreign equivalent degree or an official academic record showing that you have a baccalaureate degree or a foreign equivalent degree and letters from current or former employer showing that you have at least five years pro of progressive post-baccalaureate work experience in the specialty. If doctoral degree is customarily required, you must have, United, uh, you must have a United States doctorate of foreign equivalent degree. For exceptional ability, you must have the criteria below. So these are the criterias, you know, uh, for exceptional ability. And you can read that for yourself. You can pause this video and read this for yourself, okay, for exceptional ability. So that is um, the information based on USCIS uh, for EB2, uh, employer-based uh, immigration second preference or EB2, okay? 
Uh, I know some therapists with, uh, you know, long history of uh, employment, like in the hospital as a physical therapist, they were able to uh, be petitioned under EB2, okay? But most of my, uh, well, most of the people, my friends and uh, former students who were able to get out of the Philippines and be employed here in the U.S., uh, most of them were petitioned uh, under EB3, EB3, okay? Employment-based immigration, third preference, okay? So there are three categories for EB3, skilled workers, professionals, and other workers. So usually under um, this, with these th three categories, we will fall under, physical therapists will fall under the professionals, okay? You must demonstrate that you possess a U.S. baccalaureate or foreign equi equivalent degree, that a baccalaureate degree is a normal e requirement for entry into the occupation. You must be performing work for which qualified workers are not available in the U.S. or there's a shortage like physical therapists. Education experience may not be substituted for a baccalaureate degree and you must meet other requirements specified in the labor certification, okay? Labor certification and a permanent full-time job offer required. So this, um, uh, your employer agency are the ones uh, responsible for the labor certification and, um, you know, the full-time job uh, offer, you know, for you. They have to get this uh, labor certification in order for them to petition a foreign worker. So the legwork will be for your employer and not you as a, uh, as a uh, applicant, okay? So um, I found this, um, this website, uh, this is the, you know, emi-usa.com, um, the SGM Low Group, okay? Uh, so I will put the link down below, guys. Uh, and it, this is a good information about EB2 if you are, um, you know, interested about EB2, okay? So... Uh, they, you know, we talk about the advanced degree, the exceptional ability requirement. These are all here as well. Okay, so, and uh, the requirements uh, that you need if you are outside from the U.S., okay, uh, these are some of the requirements that you need uh, to apply for EB2. And of course, your employer agency should tell you uh, what you should bring during the interview or you should submit to them so that they can file a petition for you, okay? Um, so this is, they went through the process of uh, EB2 application. And most of this process, again, will be uh, done by your employer, okay? Um, of course, after everything has been approved, then you have to go to, uh, you know, the embassy for interview, okay? One thing that is affecting the, the processing of an immigrant visa is uh, the backlog in the uh, process, okay? Um, there is what we call priority date, you know? So uh, the time that uh, you were filed by your employer, uh, the USAIS received the application and they will stomp uh, the date on it. So that is the date uh, that they received the application and that is your date. Uh, sometimes they are late in processing. It can go back five years from now. It can go back three years from now. It all depends on um, the speed of their processing, okay? So one thing that you can actually uh, do uh, if you already were filed, you know, by your employer agency, uh, by the, you know, with immigrant visa, either EB2 or EB3. So one thing that you can do is to Google, for example, I just Googled it, 2021 priority dates for EB2 or EB3 for the Philippines. So this is, a, this is again, an official website. So you click on it you know, the travel.state.gov, okay? 
So this is the US Department of State Bureau of Consular Affairs. So this is the visa bulletin for January 2021. So it's either you, you use the keyword priority date or the visa bulletin for a specific um, month. You know, for example, right now is January. So this is the latest visa bulletin release. So what you can do is, as you can see here, okay, this is a family uh, sponsored application. Okay, family sponsored. And this is the this is the EB2, employer based and EB3. So this is will be the one that you're gonna look at. So they have India, Mexico, Philippines, and Vietnam. So actually when you say when you see when you see the letter C, it's all good. C means current. There's no backlog. Okay. So uh, it means that the processing will be fast depending on your employer or your agency, if they are you know, legal, if all their documents are authentic, if they did all their parts and they submitted all the documents, okay? And then you know, um, everything is all completed, your processing to go here under immigrant visa will not be delayed as of right now. Uh, the priority date changes month after month, okay? As you can see here in India, they're still processing in, uh, for EB2, 2009. That is like delayed, you know? So if you were filed like 2010, you're still in India because they, have, they, can have, you're, they haven't processed your application yet. Okay, and this can, you know, in the Philippines, then this can go back depending again on the speed of processing of the USCIS. Okay, it can be delayed, it can go back years behind. Okay, so if you see letter C, that's all good. Okay, India is 2010, you know, 2010 for EB3. Uh, okay, Mexico, Vietnam, and Philippines so right now is correct. Okay, so that's how you can check, okay, if your visa is being processed as of right now. Here, this is very important for you to remember about the healthcare worker certificate, okay, uh, is for professions with which have a minimum of the Bachelor of Science entry level degree, okay, for physical therapists, a master's degree is now the minimum requirement. Okay, so does it mean when, for example, you graduate as bachelor's of physical therapy, you will not be able to be petitioned under EB2 or EB3? The answer is no. As of right now, the minimum requirement is master's. But if you graduated with bachelor degree, you will be required to have additional master's uh, degree and what does it mean for me? What I did is because when I was still in the Philippines, they uh, upgraded the requirement to be the same level as master's degree. So I went to one university offering the additional subjects needed for my bachelor's degree to be upgraded to a master's degree. So you just need to get additional courses, okay? So that you can meet the minimum requirement uh, of the um, USCIS or um, the FSBPT to enter here equivalent to a master's degree, okay? So after you completed those subjects, then you can apply here in the US. So, uh, and also very important here to note is that there are only two uh, commissions are approved to release the healthcare worker certificate. This is used to be a visa screen certificate, but now they're using healthcare worker certificate. Okay, so it's either the FCCPT or Foreign Credentialing Commission on Physical Therapy and the Commission of, on Graduates of Foreign Nursing Schools or CGFNS. Okay, so these are the only two organizations that can release the healthcare worker certificate. Okay, so if you are a foreign trained therapist, a foreign educated physical therapist, 
you don't, if you have no working visa, you're not an immigrant here, best thing for you is to have the comprehensive credentials review or the type one review in which they're going to do the credentialing, meaning they're going to assess all your trainings, curriculums, okay? And if it is um, acceptable to the standard of the U.S., and they're also to, going to um, receive uh, your performance in TOEFL, whether you pass the TOEFL examination, okay, test of English as foreign language, okay, and all the other requirements they need before they can issue you the uh, healthcare worker certificate. So I hope that is, uh, you know, a little bit clear what is EB2 and EB3, okay, so it's an employer-based uh, immigration, so when you come here, you're going to be an, uh, an immigrant, okay, once you pass uh, that EB2 and EB3, okay, application. So most of the legwork here will be done by your employer or agency to prove that they need you to work here in the U.S., that there's a shortage, for example, of physical therapists in the U.S., and you are qualified as a professional to work here in the U.S., and you pass all the requirements, the credentialing, the licensing requirements, the experience that they need in order for you to work here in the US, okay? So thank you so much again for watching and please share this video on your social media, Facebook, Instagram, you know, whatever social media you have because you'll just never know. A friend of your friend might be looking for answers about, you know, an immigrant visa information and they might use this. So it's always nice to share what you find beneficial for you. It might benefit for others. So we can reach uh, as much physical therapists in different parts of the world and we can help them ease out the burden of applying as a licensed physical therapist here in the US. As always, stay blessed. Thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe button below to be updated with the latest video releases. Share this channel to other people you know who will benefit from just upright videos. Thank you again and stay blessed!